All right, so this is lesson 5.2. This one's about exponential decay. So same I can statements that we had again last time. And again, if you need to pause something, if you need to write something down, rewind it, pause it as much as you need, rewind it as much as you need, take notes, um, note a timestamp, let me know like what time you didn't understand something um, in the video, like what time throughout the video you didn't understand something so that you can be really specific with those questions so that I can help you that way. So, <clears throat> first thing we're going to look at is, again, what's the sequence that we're working with this time? So, this is an exponential sequence, um, but this time instead of it getting bigger, it's getting smaller. So, it's not growing, and we call that decay. And so, in order to find the growth factor when it's backwards, like when it's decaying instead of growing, um, what we want to do is start at the end and then divide by the number that's in front of it. So 1 divided by 2 would be 1 half. 2 divided by 4 would be 1 half. If I can drop right correctly. 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. So the growth factor for this one is 1 half. So we're not going to worry about that recursive function. We just want to talk about what the explicit is. And so again, it's that same basic setup, base to the power of x. It's just that this time, instead of our base being bigger than 1, our base is going to be smaller than 1. So for this given sequence, our function would be f of x is equal to 1 half times the power of x, or to the power of x, not times the power of x. Okay? So again, we're going to work through this really quick here. Remember that these are your x values for this function up here. Okay, so each different value of x is going to go into this exponent here. So I'm going to start down here because we should know this one right off the bat. 1 half to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is always 1. Okay, so now we have 1 half to the power of 1, and anything to the power of 1 is just itself. So this would be 1 half squared. And remember that when you square something, you multiply it times itself. So when you multiply two fractions together, you multiply both of the numerators together, and then you multiply both of the denominators together. So 1 half times 1 half would be 1 fourth. And then this one would be 1 half Cubed. So again, we're taking 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which would give us 1 eighth. So remember, in the last one we talked about, these two are opposites, which just means that their answers are going to be reciprocals of each other. So if the exponent here is 3 and your answer is 1 eighth, if the exponent is negative 3, then your answer is going to be the reciprocal of this one. So it would be 8 over 1 or just 8. So here we have positive 2 is 1 fourth. Negative 2 would be the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4 over 1, or just 4. And then two, 1 half to the first power is 1 half, so 1 half to the negative 1 power would be the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1, or just 2. So this one's going to look a little bit different. We're going to graph this now. So we're going to go from negative 3, 8, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1. So again, there's that 0, 1 point that we've talked about. And 1, 1 half. And again, there's that 1 base point that we've talked about. 2, 1 fourth. 3, 1 eighth. And remember, just because this is decay does not mean that that asymptote has changed. So now, our graph is going to be looking like this. So instead of starting low over here and getting high this way, now it's starting high this way and getting low this way. All right, so the next one that we're going to look at, describe the similarities. Well, we talked before about how every exponential function has pretty much three things in common. So one thing that they have in common is that they all go through the point 0, 1, and 1 base. Okay, same thing here. Also, the similarity is that their asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. Same thing here. 
Okay, so a lot of these same things are going to apply. Apply. Okay, so here's our asymptote. We can see this is the graph f of x is equal to 1 half to the power of x, right? And we can see that, and this is the wrong graph, this graph here is not the graph of this. Okay, so if we take this point right here, this is 0, 1. For this one, we would be going through 1, 1 half, which is about right here. And so our graph would look like this. Okay, so that's this one right here. Okay, now if we were going to graph 1 third to the power of x, that's this one right here, what that one would look like is it would still go through the point 0, 1, but then instead of going through 1, 1 half, this is going to go through 1, 1 third. So it's actually going to decay faster than the other graph. Okay, again, we have domain, range, and asymptote. So we're talking about the red graph this time. The domain, still negative infinity to positive infinity. The asymptote, still y equals 0. And the range, we still use this number here, so 0 to positive infinity. Okay, now, very similar. I wish that red graph were not there because that is not any of the graphs that we want to look at right now. But we know that this graph is going to go through the point 0, 1, 1, 1 half. And we know that the asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. So just ignore this red graph. This red graph should not be there. Okay, So the point is going to go through 0, 1, and it's going to go through 1, 1 half. And the asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. Okay, now this function here is giving us some different information. Okay, so what it's telling us is that we are taking this graph and we are moving it, remember in, this, in the parentheses with the x is the left and right and it's the opposite sign. So if this is minus 3, then we're moving it right 3. And outside of the exponent is up 1, right? We keep the same sign. So that means that we're going to take all three of these things. We're going to take this asymptote. We're going to take these two points. And we're going to shift them all right 3 and up 1. So you're not going to be able to see the horizontal shift with the asymptote, but you will be able to see the vertical shift. So we're going to move this up 1. So here's our new asymptote. And then we're going to take both of these two red points and we're going to move them right 3 and up 1. So right 3 and up 1, and right 3 and up 1. And so this one is going to look something like this. Okay, so again, we're going to ignore that red graph. And we can actually take out these red points and we can take out that asymptote because those are the parent and we want the transformed. Okay, so very similar to what we did in the last one, right? We have the blue graph is the parent, okay, and the way that we can tell that this one is the parent is because the asymptote is at zero. So the parent function is f of x is equal to, and we've got to figure out what our base is. Okay, so we can't really tell going this way, but you see that they've got this point negative 1, 4 here. And so we're just going to take this number and turn it into our base by putting it into a fraction. So this would be 1 fourth to the power of x. And we're going to put this in parentheses to show that we're taking the whole thing to the power of x and not just the 1. So the red one is the transformed function, and that's the one that we want to write. Well, we want to write the equation for this one too, okay? So again, we are going to start with this exact same beginning. So f of x is equal to 1 fourth 
to the power of x, but now we've got to change something in the exponent and something after the exponent to show how the red graph came about from the blue graph. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my asymptotes. So the asymptote for the blue one is right here. And the asymptote for the red one, you can see where it kind of starts to flatten out. That's where our asymptote is going to be. Okay, so you can see that this moved up one. Okay, so this point here moved up one, but there's no red graph there. So we need to move in the direction of the red graph until we hit it, and we just need to count how many spaces. So we're going one, two. So we went two to the left to get to that red graph. So we took this point. We moved up one, and then we have to go over until we get to this graph. And you can do the same thing with this one. If we move up one, how many did we move over to get to the red graph? Same thing. It should be the same thing for every single one. So we know that left and right goes with the x, but it has to be the opposite. So if this is going to the left, this has to be plus two. And up one is after the exponent. And it keeps the same sign. So if we're going up, that's going to be plus 1. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to graph this last function here. So our parent function that we're going to work on is just going to be this part right here. Okay, f of x is equal to 1 fourth to the power of x. So we know that this is going to go through 0, 1, and 1, 1 fourth, and the asymptote is going to be at x, sorry, not x equals 0, y equals 0. So our asymptote is going to be right here. We have 0, 1, and 1, 1 fourth. Okay? But this and this tell us that we have some transformations to make onto that transformed graph. So this is, remember the left and right, so this is not right 2, this is left 2, and this is down 5. So we're going to take each one of these asymptotes and points and we're going to shift them left 2 and down 5. So we're gonna, you're not going to be able to see the horizontal shift with the asymptote, but you'll be able to see the vertical shift. So our new asymptote is going to be down 5. So we're going to take this off of here. And then we're going to take each one of these points and we're going to move them left 2 and down 5. Left 2 and down 5. And so now our graph will look something like this. And I'm going to take these out of there. So again, try the practice problems for this one. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email. Let me know specifically what timestamp you need help at, and I will do what I can.